Good day. Where did you go on holiday this year? It's quite a typical conversation starter. Tourism has become a normal part of our everyday lives, especially for people in the West. But this hasn't always been the case. In this clip, we will briefly go through the early history of tourism until the Industrial Revolution. Up until the 19th century, before the start of the Industrial Revolution, tourism was very different to what it is today. With the rise of the early European empires, boats became a new method of transportation. It's hard to imagine now how for centuries, wind, gravity and pure animal and manpower were the only means of transportation. How green and environmentally friendly, right? But imagine what role displayed in how people were able to travel. Let's go back in time. Did you know that people in the classical world were already actively traveling? Well, at least some of them were. We know that travel was part of ancient Greek life. This is what the world looked like according to Herodotus, some two and a half thousand years ago. Travel was mostly related to wars, however. By the time the Romans came on the scene, wealthy people living in the cities liked to periodically escape to coastal and countryside resorts and villas. Lido di Ostia, for instance, was colonized by the Romans and, though it was first used as a harbor, it later became a popular leisure destination for well-off Romans. Roman travel was facilitated by a relatively strong infrastructure, peace and a single currency. Without these, it would have been far more difficult to travel throughout the empire. I'm not saying that it was easy, as it remained arduous and was considered dangerous due to potential encounters with diseases and crime. Oh dear, you have to be careful these days. Well, as you can imagine, in the medieval times, travel remained both arduous and an elitist activity. During this period, people typically traveled for warfare, education or pilgrimage purposes. Pilgrimages, like the famous... Ah, thanks. Like the famous Camino de Santiago, were mostly undertaken as a penance of sins this Camino had multiple routes that started in various places to reach the ultimate destination in Santiago de Compostela. Religion had become incredibly important in this era, and that's why there was not much time left for unproductive forms of travel amongst everyday people. Idle hands were in fact considered the playthings of the devil. Travel for the purposes of leisure and learning experienced a revival and expansion during the Renaissance. People again became curious about the world around them and how it worked. Leonardo da Vinci and other great scientists came up with great inventions in the Renaissance. These inventions, believe it or not, still make our leisure time more exciting today. Think of parachutes, scuba diving gear and even condoms. The inventions of these or those things at those times greatly contribute to the way we spend our holidays today. But the Renaissance was also an era of new exploration. Think of Magellan, who primarily explored the world for trade to discover new trade routes to avoid Portuguese territory. His expedition was the first in history to circumnavigate the, wo the world as he discovered a passage from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific, all with the vision of bringing spices worth a fortune from the faraway Orient. He himself came from a noble family, as was the norm for other well-known personas of those times. Traveling and exploring was still mostly for the elite. The exposure to different cultures, be it via numerous explorations or colonization efforts, became a crucial element for the development of travel in centuries to follow. It was during the Renaissance and later the Enlightenment that a key phase of European leisure and tourism development emerged, the Grand Tour. In this tour of Europe, many university students, scholars and nobles traveled by carriage to inspect and learn from key sites of European cultural heritage. To conclude for now, ancient European societies that valued intellectual progress interestingly also prioritized travel for leisure and education. Mind that we observed that travel was reserved for the higher elite classes in European societies. In this video we have briefly presented a Eurocentric account of tourism's pre-industrial history. But consider what we might learn from how tourism took shape in other parts of the world. How did travel and tourism come about in Asia, Africa and the Americas? And were travel and tourism practices also typically reserved for the elite there? Mm -hmm.